Okay, today we're going to be graphing again on the, co on the coordinate grid, and we're going to do very similar to what we've done in the past. Remember when we set up linear equations in slope-intercept? Well, we're going to set up linear inequalities in slope-intercept, and we're going to graph them. There are only a couple of things that we need to know, and that is, if we see that the sign on the inequality is less than or, excuse me, less than or greater than, we're going to use a dashed line. If we see in the inequality that we have, excuse me, less than or greater than or equal to, we're going to use the solid line. All right, so if you remember, when we put it in slope-intercept, that this is the y-intercept, so we'll begin by going down the y to a negative 4, and then we're going to do what the slope right here tells us to do, which is up 3 to the right 1. All right, so let's go down the y to 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the slope says it's a positive 3, so we'll go up 3 and over 1. Up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Now, I'm getting ready to draw my line, but let's see what kind of line we need to draw. In this case, it is going to be a solid line. So let's make a nice long line, and there's a reason for that. Okay, it won't be perfect, but it'll, it'll, it will do. Okay. All right. Now, there's only one other part left to do. Everything to the right of that line or to the left of that line is going to be an answer. We just need to figure out which side. This line is called a boundary line. So what we need to do is we need to pick a coordinate to test in the inequality so we can find out what side we should shade. Now, we have subbed in values for x's and y's before, and probably one of the easiest things to sub in would be the location 0, 0, which of course is right here. So if I were to go back to the original equation, and when I see x, put a 0, and when I see y, put a 0, because x is 0 and y is 0, then I'll be able to find out if that statement is true in the inequality or not, and it will tell me what side I need to shade. So here is our line. It is going uphill. It's a positive slope. That's called our boundary line, and we used a solid because of this inequality sign. Now I'm going to go sub in this original problem, y is 0, x is 0. There's y. y is 0. Put the sign. What is 3 times 0? 0 minus 4. Now I want you to read what that says. I have marked the 0, 0 that we tested on our grid. 0 is bigger than a negative 4. 0 is bigger than or equal to a negative 4. Now if that is true, then I want to shade my 0, 0 in everything on this side of that boundary line. If that is not true, then I want to get on the opposite side from the 0, 0, and I want to shade all this. So let's, let's look at it. 0 is bigger than a negative 4. 0 is bigger than or equal to a negative 4. Well, if that's a true statement, then the 0, 0 that I tested is true, which means that all of this, all of these coordinates are good answers for this inequality. So each time I graph it in slope-intercept, then I'll go back to the original, and I'll test out the 0, 0 to see what side of the boundary line I should be shading on, okay? All right, let me erase this, and we'll get another one going here. Okay, let's try this next one. I have a negative y is less than or equal to 5x minus 7. Now, though that's in slope-intercept, we're going to have to divide by a negative 1 all the way across because we don't graph when we have a negative y. So I'm going to divide by a negative 1, and we now have y 
I'm going, because I'm going to go back to the original and test in my zero, zero, I'm, I'm not concerned about the sign right now, so I'm just going to put equal. I'll worry about that in a minute. Okay, so I now have a negative 5x, and two negatives make a positive 7. Okay? Now, I do need to know what the sign is, so I'll know if I'm going to do a solid or a dashed line. But right now, let's go up the y to a 7, which is right here. And then we want to go down 5 and to the right 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and to the right 1. Now, what kind of line are we going to be drawing? We have uh, less than or equal to, so it needs to be a solid line this time. All right, well, let me draw it. That's close. Sorry about that. All right, now. I'm going to go back to the original, which is this right here. Because if I didn't, and I divided by a negative, I'd have to change the signs. And if I forget to change the signs, then when I do my tester of 0, 0, it wouldn't work. So I usually just go back to the original and sub in my 0, 0, and it works beautifully. All right, here we go. We're going to test the 0, 0, and here's 0, 0. If the statement is true, then we're going to cover that zero, zero, and everything on that side of the boundary line. If not, we'll go to the other side. Okay, here we go. What's y? Zero. Less than or equal to, what's five times zero? Zero minus seven. Okay, now that statement says that zero is less than or equal to a negative seven. Now that is not true, is it? Zero is not less than a negative number. Not true. So when I tested the zero, zero, it did not give me a true statement. So this guy right here does not get to be covered. None of this side gets to be covered where he is. We're gonna go over here and shade every bit of that side. And that is a picture of this inequality, okay? All right, let's try another one. Okay, this time I'm going to give you one in standard form and we'll put it into slope intercept. Okay, here comes x plus 3y is less than 3. Okay, remember we're going to start with 3y. 3y, I'll just put equal because we'll worry about that sign later. Now when your x moves over, you know what it becomes. It turns into the opposite. So we now have a negative 1x plus 3. Now, you know we can't graph yet because we've got to divide by 3, okay? Okay, so now we have y is equal to a negative 1 third x. There's your slope, and 3 into 3 is a positive 1. All right, so I'm going to start with 1 on the y right there, and I'm going to go down 1 and to the right 3. Down one to the right, one, two, three. Okay, now I, before I draw that line, I need to see what kind of line I'm going to be drawing. We're going to have to have a dotted, I mean a dashed line, dotted or dashed line. Okay, here we go. All right, now here is our zero, zero that we're going to be testing. So I'm going to go back again into the original. And I'm going to test my x is 0, y is 0. x, 0. Plus 3 times 0, 0. Is less than 3. 0 is less than 3. 0 is less than 3. Is that true? 0 is less than 3. So when I tested the 0, 0, that was a true statement. And because the statement was true, 0, 0 right here gets to be covered. And so does everything else. It has to be shaded on the same side where the zero, zero is because he told the truth. Okay? All right, let's try another. Okay, how about this one? Let's do 4x plus 5y is greater than 20. Now let's set it up in slope-intercept. Ready? 5y 
I'll just put equal for now. Let's move our 4x over and make it negative. Negative 4x plus 20. Okay, you know we got to divide by 5. Okay. And now we're down to y is equal to a negative 4 over 5x, which is our slope, plus 4. Okay, let's go up the y to the 4. And from there, the slope says go down 4 and to the right 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right there. Now before I draw the line, let's make a decision. Dash, our dotted line. Okay, here we go. All right, now let's test out the zero, zero. I'm going to erase all this so you'll only see the original, which is what I want to put my zero, zero into. Four times zero is zero. Plus five times zero is zero. Zero is bigger than 20. Okay, we just tested the zero, zero right there. And that statement came back as zero is bigger than 20. Well, zero is not bigger than 20. So zero and all this side does not get to be shaded because he fibbed to us. So we're going to jump on the other side of the boundary line away from the zero, zero. And all this area will be possible answers. And that whole side over there gets to be shaded. Okay. All right. Let's try another. Okay, this time let's try 3x minus 4y is less than a negative 12. All right, we're going to start with a negative 4y. Negative 4y, I'll just use my equal because I'll be going back to the original as we discussed. Move the 3x over, negative 3x minus 12. Divide by negative 4 so we can get down to y. Y is equal to, now I can keep it negative 3 over negative 4, or I can just make them both positive. If that doesn't work, I can always change it back. So I'm just going to go ahead and say 3 over 4x, 4 into 12 is a positive 3 because of the two negatives. Okay, I'm going to go, and I can do that, so I'm going to go up 3 on the Y, and now the rise and the run says go up 3 into the right 4. Up one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And let's go back and look at my sign. Sign is less than, so I need a dotted or dashed line, don't I? Okay, here we go. All right, now I'm going to test my zero, zero for truth or the lie. Let's go back to the original. When you see x, we're going to say times 0. When you see y, times 0. 3 times 0 is 0. Minus 4 times 0 is 0. Less than a negative 12. That says that 0 is smaller than a negative number. Now, 0 is not smaller than a negative number. Negative numbers are smaller than 0. So once again, the 0, 0 has fit to us which means he does not get shaded. None of this area gets shaded. I'm going to have to shade everything on this side of the boundary line. Okay, okay let's try another. Okay, this time I'd like to do, oh, let's go with uh, x minus 2y is greater than a negative 2. All right, let's get in slope intercept. Negative 2y, I'll just put my equal. Move the x over. Negative 1x minus 2. Let's divide by a negative 2. Okay, 2 into 2 is a positive y. I can leave it as a negative 1 over a negative 2. I can make them both positive for 1 half x. Negative into a negative is a positive 1. All right, let's go to a positive 1 on the y. And it says go up 1 into the right 2 from that location. 
up one to the right two. Now before you get excited and draw your line, let's see what kind of line we're doing. We're going to do another dash line, aren't we? Okay, here we go. Okay, here's the zero, zero, right there. Let's test him out and see what he's telling us this time. Okay, I'm going to go back to the original, and I'm going to let x be zero, y be zero. What's x? Zero. Minus two times y? Zero. Bigger than negative two. That says zero is greater than a negative two. Now let's see if, if that zero, zero location is telling us the truth. Zero is bigger than a negative two. That is true, isn't it? So when I tested the zero, zero, it came back as a true statement. That means that he gets to be shaded and everything on his side of the boundary line gets to be shaded along with him. Okay? All right, let's try. Uh, let's let's uh, try something just a little bit different. You know, sometimes you just have horizontal and vertical lines, so we need to make sure we know how to shade those as well. Let's say um, let's say that we have y is uh, greater than or equal to four. Now, if all you have is a y, you remember what we're going to do? We're going to go up the y to a four. So let's go up the y to a 4, which is right here. And in order to draw a y line, he's got to physically cross over himself. So it looks like I'm going to have a solid, and I'm going to cross over the y intercept, because that's y at a 4. Now, we have to decide if we're going to shade everything above or everything below. And we're still going to use our 0, 0. We just don't happen to have an x this time, but that's okay. Okay, we'll put our 0, 0. We don't have an x, so all we're going to do is say what y is, and y is 0. Y, you're 0. Okay, when we subbed in 0 for y, the statement was 0 is greater than or equal to 4. 0, 0, 0. That is not greater than or equal to 4. That is a fib. That statement is not true. Well, if it's not true, then I'm not going to shade him. I'm not going to shade any of this down there where that zero, zero is. I'm going to have to get on the other side and shade up here because the zero, zero that I tested did not come back as a true statement. So I will get to the other side of the boundary line. Okay? Now let's try an X. Okay, let's say that we have x is less than 3. Now I'm going to go on the x-axis to a, let's make it a negative 3. I'm going to go to the x-axis and we're going to go to a negative 3. So here we go. Here it is right here. All right. Now in order to draw an x line, that line has to physically cross over itself, over the x-axis. So we know it's going to be a vertical line. But what kind of vertical line? A dashed or dotted vertical line. OK, so now we have the line. And we're getting ready to test that 0, 0 again to see if we should shade to the right of the line or to the left of the line. OK, since we don't have a y, we won't put in a 0 for y. What's x? x is 0. OK, 0 is less than a negative 3. 0 is less than a negative 3. 0 is less than a negative 3. That is not true. That is not true. 0, 0 did not tell us the truth when we tested it. So I'm not going to shade him at all. I'm going to get on this side and everything on this side of the line, of the boundary line, is going to be a good answer. Okay? So I think we've pretty much taken care of graphing linear inequalities with two variables on a grid. And uh, our last unit coming up in Module 13 will be a little review of geometry.